Caleb Jones, your best friend, or should I say your dad in most cases. <laughs> I think most of my audience are young enough where I could be their dads. I think that's true. I don't know. Could a 30, could a 35 year old man be my son? Let's think that through for a minute. I mean, I guess technically probably not, but uh, my actual son is 28. So there you go. I am recording this from my hotel room in Dubai. I have a corner room and I'm looking out over the city and it is beautiful. And as I've mentioned several times on my Instagram account, and by the way, if you do not follow me on Instagram, you should. My Instagram ID over there is the real Caleb Jones. But anyway, as I mentioned over there a few times in my Instagram stories, this is one of the results of a lifelong dream that I've had since I was a very, very young man. One of my big dreams was to be in a really cool apartment or cool hotel room or cool office or maybe a combination of all three of those things and look out over a really cool, really amazing, high-tech, modern city. And I had that specific image in mind, not of a big city, but of a cool, new, modern, high-tech city. So, for example, not a city like New York, not an old, dirty, tired city, which is all my opinion, which is like New York. That's my opinion. If you love New York, that's wonderful. I love visiting New York. I would never live there. But looking out over the New York skyline doesn't really turn me on. But instead, looking out over the skyline of Hong Kong, when you're in Chim Sa Choi, right on the water there, looking out over Central. Amazing. If you're in the Pudong district of Shanghai, and you're looking at those, those gigantic towers, you know, three of the top tallest buildings in the world are located right there in a circle. It's amazing. And right now I'm looking at Dubai. And most of the buildings that are in within my view here were not even here two to eight years ago. Amazing. Brand new, clean, high tech, awesome. And this is one of those podcasts where I don't have a set agenda. It's mostly free form here, but I have a few ideas. A few things. One is, and this is going to sound really stupid and it's going to sound cliche and it's going to sound like I'm kind of making it up or trying to just, you know, pump you up. And I'm not. Dreams come true. Fantasies come true. That is my life to a T. And I've said this before on my YouTube videos. My financial life, in terms of my financial life, my income, not my net worth, but my income, my average typical annual income is beyond my largest income goal that I ever set for myself. I, I think I mentioned this before in a prior podcast. So the biggest income goal I ever set for myself was $250,000 a year. And that's around $20,000 a month. And I went, man, if I made $20,000 a month, oh my God, I'd be rich for life. That'd be great. Today, I make a multiple of that figure. I mean, I don't make just more than that. I make a multiple of that, multiples. So uh, yeah, now my net worth, in my opinion, is lower than it should be. I have more work to do there, in my opinion. But in terms of my income, I mean, I make, not only do I make what I wanted to make, I make more than I ever fantasized. My woman life, and I've mentioned this before, is not my wildest fantasies. It is beyond my wildest fantasies. Things that I do on a semi-regular basis in my life are beyond the wildest fantasies I ever had when I was a teenager or a man in my 20s. And I had some pretty crazy, amazing sexual fantasies. It's beyond those. Events like this, where I can sit down and look out over a city in a beautiful hotel room, something I, <laughs> I could not afford to do when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. Actually, most of my 20s, I couldn't afford to do this. When I was 18 years old, I remember, and again, I've mentioned this before, I could barely buy food. I could barely put gas in my car. And I thought, there's just, there's just no way. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if, but there's just no way I could do this. So I have all these moments in my life right now, in my typical month. Not like once a year, not like I could go on a cool vacation once a year, because that's most people, most middle-class people, they can go on a cool vacation or a decent vacation once a year. I experience these things all the time, these fantasies, quote unquote. And these are things that are now a part of my life. And I have been living this lifestyle, Alpha Male 2.0, for, let's see, 13 years now. And I have lived at least, oh, I would say seven or eight years of that as a man who has accomplished these objectives, these fantasies. So I've been living this lifestyle a long time. And still to this day, I have times where I wake up and I go, is this real? Do I really get to do this? Um, events like this, where I just look out over a city. And I've had millions of these events. Hong Kong, 
Shanghai, Singapore, Dubai, amazing cities all over the world. London. I mean, that's a cool city if you, depending on where you look, <laughs> depending on the skyline of where you are. But I've had all these experiences and, you know, I, I have experiences where I will just wake up and turn over and look at Pink Firefly. If you've seen my YouTube videos, you know what she looks like. And I'm like, holy crap. I'm married to a woman who looks like this. I'm married to a woman. Not only does she look like this, she never gives me drama. We have a fantastic marriage and I can have sex with women on the side and I do all the time. And then I look at pictures of my FBs or I just visualize moments with my FBs. Not FBs from like seven years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because a lot of men my age do that. They romanticize their own pasts. They're like, oh man, back in the seventies, man, I was a player and I got laid with all these hot babes. And, you know, 12 years ago before I got married, it was so great. No, I'm talking about right now and 10 years ago, both. I'm like, oh my God, I get to do this. I can't believe this. And again, I know this sounds kind of gay, but it's true. I live today, my, not just goals, not just objectives, but my fantasies beyond my fantasies in most respects. Matter of fact, the only two parts of my life that are not beyond my wildest fantasies, the only two are my net worth, which is fine, but not where I need it to be, and my body fat percentage. I expect it to be a little more physically fit by the time I hit this current age I'm at now at 48. If you just take those two things out of the equation, literally every other aspect of my life, including, by the way, my physical health, my physical health, physical energy, family life, my sex life, my relationship life, my business, my travel, my overall lifestyle, my five flag stuff, everything is beyond my wildest fantasies. Now, beyond that, a few things. So here's number one. It's not like I had to bust my ass for 30 years to get these things. <laughs> Honestly, I started in this lifestyle, uh, what, 13 years ago. And the only reason it took me, you know, how long did, I don't know how many years it actually took me to get to the point where in the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle, where I had my woman life and my financial life in very, very good places. A few years, maybe, I don't know, four years, five years. So it took me four or five years. Now you could argue, well, Caleb, that's because you were already 35 when you started this process and you were already making a six figure income before that and blah, blah, blah. That's true. That's true. And one of the benefits I had was I, I entered into this world when I was, quote, an older man. And I consider older men at age 35 and above. And I was 35 when I entered in this lifestyle. So that's true. There was a quicker ramp up time for me in terms of getting from A to Z. But again, I mean, I was, how old was I? 40-ish? 40-ish. Just a few years. My point is, this stuff doesn't take very long. A lot of societal programming, especially a lot of the traditional, you know, down-home, right-wing societal programming is, hey, and this is what I was told when I was a kid in the 80s, hey, kid, you know, you put your nose to the grindstone, put your head down, and you work hard, bust your ass, you be a good employee, 35 years, 45 years, and someday you'll make the good life. And, and they give these giant numbers like 25, 35, 45 years. Mine was just six years, maybe 10 if you want to add another stuff prior to that. I didn't have to work very long. I really didn't. And, and most importantly, I did not have a Caleb to help me go through this process. The vast majority of these alpha male 2.0 models, the business models and the relationship models, the vast majority, not the vast majority, I would say, 60% or so were things that I had to come up with on my own. There was about 40% that I could take from bits and pieces. So a lot of the Alpha 2.0 business model, for example, are bits and pieces of Michael Gerber's content, bits and pieces of Tim Ferriss's content, things like that. So I had the building blocks of some of this stuff. And even some of the non-monogamous relationship stuff, I learned from, I, there were bits and pieces of that from the pickup artist community back about 10, 15 years ago or so. So I was able to get bits and pieces. But the models weren't there. I had to design the models myself from scratch. I had to learn how to do this from scratch. Even most of the online dating stuff I did, I had to come up with from scratch. There was not a lot of online dating gurus back in 2007, 2008, 2009. I was one of two of them. There was, there was a guy named Dave M way back then, and I don't think he's around anymore. And there was me, Black Dragon. That was it. So I had to come up with a lot of this crap, most of this crap myself. You don't need to do that. You can just copy what I have done. You can take the models that I have for you and just duplicate them. So you should be able to get from A to Z faster than me. Even though it didn't take me very long, you could do it faster than me because you have a blueprint, which is something that I never had. I had to come up with this stuff on my own. So that's why it took so long, quote unquote, although a few years isn't very long. It really isn't. 
I've said many times, a lot of my content is the content I wish I had when I was in my 20s and 30s, when I was a younger man. And the majority of you, or at least the plurality of you in my audience are between the age of 25 and 35. So there you go. You have that thing that I wanted so badly, a blueprint to live a life of maximum masculine freedom, maximum masculine long-term happiness. So you need to keep in mind those two aspects. Number one, it doesn't take very long. And number two, it will take you faster than it took me, or at least it should, because you have a blueprint. Now, here's the next piece to this. It's not like I had to work 100-hour weeks for years and years and years. I didn't have to do that to accomplish this. I really didn't. And there are lots of guys in my audience who have built Alpha Tupano businesses where they were able to quit their jobs on just a few hours a week. And my recommendation usually is 15 hours per week, but there are guys who don't less than that, 10 hours a week. So it's not like you have to bust your ass and work 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week. Some guys, particularly a lot of younger guys, millennials, Gen Z guys will complain, well, I don't want to work that hard. I didn't have to work that hard. I really didn't. Now, I had to work hard. That's true. I had to put in the time. That's true. That's true. But it's not like I had to bust my ass. I really didn't. In both formulating the Alpha Tupano business models that I now have and in dating women and formulating these relationship models, A, it was not that much work. It was some work, but it wasn't that much work. And B, a lot of the work was fun. So let me use the female example. So I've written about my story, the Black Dragon blog. I have an entire series of articles over there called My History with Women. And as I go through that process from 2007 all the way to maybe 2009 to when I got good, so it took me about two years to get good at this stuff, two, two and a half years or so, a lot of that work, I talk about how I did a lot of things wrong and I put in some work, but a, a lot of that work, I would estimate, I would say at least 50, 60% of that work was fun. It was exciting. So it's not like this was, oh God, this whole thing, I got to go on more dates and oh God, I got to have sex with a new 19 year old. Oh man, this is lame. No, it was fun. Not all of it was fun. I said 50, 60%. The other 50, 40% was work. That's true. But it's not like all of it was work. Same thing with formulating my Alpha 2.0 businesses. And yes, I got a head start on some of that stuff. But back in 2007, I was a business owner, but I was the typical standard, normal, traditional beta male business owner. I had a location dependent business. I had a few of them. I had a few different income streams, but that was it. And so I had to convert all that to Alpha 2.0 location independent income. And the majority of that work, I would say at least 75%, maybe 80% was fun. It was enjoyable. You guys know, you guys who are currently starting your own businesses, you've actually started your own business already and you're in the heat of getting that going. It's kind of fun, isn't it? It's exciting, isn't it? It's enjoyable. It's not like, oh man, I have to go to a job. Oh, great. Oh, great. I have to work on my dumb business tonight. That's usually not how I feel about it. And that's probably not how you usually feel about it. Usually. We all have days. We all have days we don't want to work. That's fine. It's human. It's okay. But it's not like it's just, oh my God, I have to do this horrible work. Oh my God, I got to go on more dates. Oh my God, I have to schedule in all my women this week. Where will they? Oh, I hate scheduling all these women. Oh, this. No, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Most of it is fun. So that's the third piece. You don't have to work that hard. You can do it faster than I did. And a lot of the work, the quote unquote work, both in your business life and your woman life is enjoyable. So if a thing is enjoyable, is it work? No. That's why when I say I like to work, I enjoy working, I mean that literally. It's not work because I enjoy it. There's aspects of my work that I don't enjoy, and those parts are work. But that's a small percentage or a smaller percentage. And the more successful I get, the more successful I become, the smaller that negative percentage has become. I have a staff now of about 15 people who are doing a lot of the quote-unquote work stuff that I was doing that I didn't want to do, that I didn't like. And they're doing it now. So great. So the percentage of the amount of work I do in a given week in my companies that I don't like is much smaller than it was, certainly much smaller than it was, you know, three, four, five years ago, without question. But even back then, it wasn't a huge percentage. It was probably maybe 20, 30% at most. 70, 80% of what I did, I did for fun. I like writing articles about these things. I like talking about these topics. I like managing businesses. I like coming up with new products and new services. I love writing books. I'm a writer by nature. That's what I like to do. If I wasn't writing about these topics, I promise you I'd be writing about something else because that's my natural talent and that's what I enjoy doing. It's not like, I go, oh man, I got to write my book tonight. I've never thought of it that way. I love writing. I could write all day if I could. Be great. Moreover, the type of work that I do, the type of topics I discuss in my Alpha 2.0 business, the types of marketing I do in my marketing company, 
the types of consulting I do when I'm a consultant in my consulting practice. These are generally, most of the time, things I like to do, things I find very interesting, things I find challenging in an enjoyable way. These are not things like, oh man, I got to do this work. Ugh. No, that's how someone feels when they have a job, right? When you have a job, that's how you feel. And I haven't had a job in, geez, 25 years or more. And I, but I remember having a job. I remember going, God damn, I got to go my job today. Oh God. Ugh. I drive to work every morning and that long commute. God, that sucked. And, and, you know, even though my last job wasn't all that bad, it was so boring. My last job was working at Nike. I worked at the Nike headquarters, which a lot of people think is a really prestigious, cool company and prestigious, cool thing to do. And it sucked. Nothing wrong with Nike, but it sucked because I had a job. I had to drive out to Beaverton, Oregon, park in the campus, and there's, a be and there's beautiful buildings, walk through the beautiful building, and then sit in my goddamn cubicle. I had a goddamn cubicle. I didn't have an office. I had a goddamn cubicle and sit in my cubicle, put on my headset, and I was on the phone for most of the day answering stupid, dumb computer questions that were so dumb and so stupid, I could have answered them in my sleep, and sometimes I did. It was so fucking boring. I wanted to put a gun in my mouth and end it all there because it sucked. <laughs> but you know when I got excited? At 5 p.m. when I got the fuck out of there and I could work on my own business. That's when I got excited. Your business is not like a job. It's the opposite. It's literally the opposite of a job. Same thing with your woman life. The guy who goes, oh, God, I got to take my wife out to dinner. That's the guy who's monogamous and has been monogamous for many, many, many years. You know, the guy who's been living with his girlfriend for six years and he wants to have sex and he's barely motivated to do it, but he's horny and like, come on, let's have sex. He's like, I don't want to. How about Friday? He's like, come on, just, I'll just make it quick. Come on. It's like, I don't want to. That bullshit. That's the typical lifestyle of the typical, usually beta male, but in some cases, some alpha male 1.0s as well. That's what's boring. And that's what's soul killing. The standard models, not the alpha 2.0 models. How many other men do you know? And this is a serious question. This is sound like I'm bragging. And I think a lot of this podcast probably sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not bragging for me, even though, yes, I am. I am bragging for you. I'm excited about you. But let me ask you a question. How many men do you know? Because this is a true statement. How many men do you know who have been consistently excited about their woman life for 13 years straight? How many other men do you know like that? How many other men can you find as content providers on the internet who can say that? including guys in the red pill, manister, pickup artist worlds who have been consistently excited about their woman life, not frustrated, not bored, consistently excited for 13 years. Cause that's me. I have been consistently excited about my woman life for 13 years straight. How about a typical married guy? How many typical married, you know, traditionally monogamously married guys do you know who've been married for 13 years? And after 13 years of being married to that same chick who's now gained 27 pounds and they have sex once a month or something is Super excited about his woman life. Super excited about his marriage. You see my point? That's what the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle can do for you. Not just for me, for you. That's why I always add into the formula long-term happiness, not just being happy. If you want to be happy, go marry somebody. And during the wedding, you'll be happy. And during those first few months, you'll be happy. And moving in together, you'll be happy. And all that bullshit. Having that first baby, you'll be happy. Will you be happy for 13 years? No. You wouldn't be happy for three, <laughs> statistically speaking. You'll be happy for a while, and then you won't. I talk about long-term happiness, and I am the example for that, and I kind of have to be. I teach these models, so I better be the example. If you saw me, and I was like grumpy and pissed off, and oh, this sucks, and Democrats suck, and feminists suck, and country sucks, and people suck, and bullshit. You saw me do that all the time with kind of this grumpy look on my face. And boy, could I mention names of other content providers in my space that fall into that category. Many of them, I won't do that. But if you saw me do that every day and I'm teaching long-term masculine happiness, wouldn't really match, would it? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you can do this. One of the challenges when I talk about things like my income, and it's actually one of the reasons I don't talk about specifically what my income is, barring legal reasons, is, and I've mentioned this in my blogs before, is that once these numbers start getting high enough, they start becoming unbelievable. And one of the many reasons why I don't go into really intimate detail on some of the sexual escapades I'm, I'm doing now in my life, historically I can tell you things, but right now, one of the reasons I don't go into those details is because 
guys go, oh my God, I could never do that. I mean, I learned that the hard way years ago when I was first talking about Black Dragon stuff on the Pickup Artist forums. And I used to have a column, not a column, but a regular series of forum posts that I did. That's actually where I became kind of well-known. I used to have these series of posts on the forums, the Pickup Artist forums called State of the Union. And about once every four or five months, I would post the Black Dragon State of the Union. And I would list the 12 or 13 women I had dated, not had sex with, but dated in an ongoing relationship over the past three to six months. And I would go through in great detail the women, their ages, every single woman. And I would talk about how I was dating them all at the same time. And I was. And it was very popular. A lot of people liked it. But a lot of guys go, oh, my God, I can never do this. I'll just be monogamous. <laughs> I could never date 12 women. Oh, my God. And uh, as I said many times, you don't have to date 12 women. I was back then. Today, I don't. Today, I have a wife and two FBs, two to three on the side, and that's it. But anyway, one of the challenges with talking about this great life that I've got is I want you to have this, but at the same time, I don't want to overwhelm your brain to the point where your brain, specifically your subconscious, says, well, yeah, I mean, Caleb can do that, but you can't. You're a fucking loser. Because I had those voices in my head, too, when I was a young man. You can do this. And you don't have to, nor should you duplicate the exact lifestyle I have. Maybe you don't want to travel at all. Maybe you want to have a really cool house. Or some guys I've talked to in my audience want to build a homestead out in the country that build like a farm and a home and just live there the rest of their lives with their OLTR wife and have an FB or two on the side. Great. Maybe you don't want to ever get married. Maybe you go married. That's fucking stupid. I don't ever want to get married. A lot of guys in that category. Great. Maybe your woman ideal is to have one MLTR and like four FBs or two or three MLTRs or no MLTRs, just two or three really solid FBs. Some guys want that. Great. Design the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle you want, write it out, and then use the models that I have to achieve those objectives. I've talked a lot about this at the SMIC program, where you should write out a vision, which is different than your mission. A vision is, it's actually very simple and very fun. You write out on a blank document, a page or two or three of your perfect life in all respects. How do you look? What does your woman life look like? How much money do you make? What does your business life look like? What is your life? What does your typical week, typical month look like? And you write out in detail, everything was perfect. And if you haven't done that, by the way, you need to do that. That's, that's something you need to put on your to-do list for the next few days, like this weekend. Sit down and write this shit out. If you haven't done that, you're harming yourself. Write out what you want your ideal life to look like. Then from there, you can pull out specific goals. And then you take the alpha 2.0 models that I've got, the business models and the dating relationship models. Use those models to achieve those goals. Don't copy my life. A lot of you wouldn't like my life, and that's fine. And yes, there's some of you who would love an exact duplicate of my life. I've had a few of you tell me that as well. Caleb, I, you, what you have is exactly what I want. I want a wife like Pink Firefly. I want to travel. I want to have bees. Oh my God, that's perfect. Great. Whatever it is you want. Don't feel like you have to copy me, but design your own Alpha 2.0 life. There's lots of different types of Alpha Male 2.0s. But you can do this. Now, let me speak really quick to those of you listening to this who are way behind. So maybe you are a virgin. Maybe you've only had sex with two or three women and you're really scared to go out and date women. Or maybe your woman life has been fine. You've had sex with lots of women, but you're one of those guys where You've had sex with a lot of average or ugly girls. You've never had sex with a pretty girl in your life. Or you do get laid. Your sex life is fine. Uh, you've had sex with pretty girls, or maybe you have a girlfriend or something, or maybe even you're married. But your financial life is really bad. You make a, an extremely low income. You're dependent upon your parents or your family. Or maybe you make an average income, and you've got a lot of debt, and you don't see a way out. I relate to all of those things. I did not lose my virginity until I was 23 years old. So I completely relate to the feeling of looking at other men, seeing them with pretty girls and going, oh my God, I could never do that. Oh my God, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be amazing? That'd be so amazing. Therefore, it'll never happen to me because I'm not amazing. When I was 29 or so, late 20s, early 30s, I had so much debt that I thought I would never recover. Even if I filed bankruptcy, I thought that I, would, I had permanently damaged my entire life for the rest of my life because of all the debt I had. And that was even before I got divorced. Then I had to pay alimony, which is debt on top of that. And the pit was so deep, I didn't see how I could get out of the pit. And if you're like that, I was like that. 
at least to a degree. And I personally know men who were like that. And there are other men in my audience who were like that, who now have an alpha male 2.0 similar to mine or, or getting there. Pretty amazing. I have seen guys turn this stuff around. I work with guys who were virgins. Virgins, I don't mean like 18-year-old virgins. I mean virgins well in their 20s. And within a year, they've got two MLTRs and two FBs and they're all hot. I've worked with guys like this. I've worked with guys who had a job they hated, had a bunch of debt, and within a year, within a year, they were making six figures in an alpha 2.0 business. Within one year. Now, is that typical? No. I have to be legal here. Results, not typical. But I've worked with guys who've done this. You can do this. And one thing I'll add to that really quick, if you are really in the hole mentally, if you're really depressed, if you're just really unmotivated, if you're, if you're super negative about your life, you probably need to go see a therapist. Go see a therapist. I know that sucks. I know you don't want to do it. I know therapists suck. I know you've tried it before. You have to try again. If at first you don't succeed, you try, try again. Some of you guys also, and, and you should know this by now if you know my content, if you feel depressed, if you feel sleepy, if you feel lethargic, if you feel like you're just not motivated and you can't put a finger on why, you got to go get a fucking blood test immediately. And the four things you need to check on that, and I'm a broken record on this shit, is testosterone, estrogen, T3, which is your thyroid, and your vitamin D. And you got to make sure all of those are in the correct levels. If everyone in my audience who felt depressed or unmotivated or sad or what have you just did those two things, you got a fucking blood test and started working on those numbers and you started seeing a therapist or you started seeing a therapist, maybe you don't need both. Maybe you do one or the other. You'll change your life forever. And all of a sudden, these things that you think are too hard will suddenly get much more simple. Because guess what? Here's the secret. These things aren't hard. These things aren't difficult. There isn't one thing in building my Alpha 2.0 lifestyle that I considered really difficult. As a matter of fact, building my traditional businesses before I was Alpha 2.0, like in my 20s, when I was starting my consulting businesses and things like that, there were things I did then that were very difficult, like cold calls. That's hard. I did. That's hard. You don't necessarily need to do that for an Alpha 2.0 business. Sometimes you do, but usually you don't. So there is nothing I did, both in my business models, Alpha 2.0, and relationship models that were really, really difficult. There were some things that were a little difficult. There were some things that maybe a little uncomfortable because I was new at them, but they weren't hard. So that's the bottom line. It doesn't take that long. It'll take you faster than me. A lot of the work isn't really work because it's fun. And number four, it's really not that hard. It might look hard to you. It might look difficult to you. It's not. I promise you it's not. One thing I do know about you if you're listening to my voice I know this. I know this for a fact because I've seen the statistics and, I, and I, I have a lot of anecdotal data to support this as well. You're probably a higher IQ guy. You're probably a more intelligent guy than the average. The intelligence level of my audience skews very high. So you probably have that covered. You're probably a really smart guy, which means the hardest part is already behind you. If you're a dumb guy, yeah, Alpha 2.0 might be difficult. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but you probably don't have that problem. You're a smart guy. That's why I know you can accomplish these things in your business life and your woman life and other aspects of your life too, that can be helped. I can't talk about fitness or things like that, but can you imagine if your business life, your financial life was perfect or great and your woman life was perfect or at least great, probably wouldn't be difficult to be physically fit, right? It isn't. I promise you can do this stuff. And as always, if you need more help with this, you can join the SMIC program at joinsmic.com or if you want my direct one-on-one -on -one help where I work with you one-on-one -on -one for an entire year, plus you get all of my courses and all of my books for free, you can join the Focus program. Matter of fact, we're one or two days away from the deadline where you get a big discount on that, but you still have a few more weeks to sign up if you want to. If you're interested in that, you can go to calebjones.com and click coaching at the top and it's there. I'll probably put a link to in the uh, YouTube version of this podcast, but if you need my help, I'm here to help you. But the bottom line is you can do this. I don't teach anything that is not doable by you. You listening to my voice. There's nothing I teach that you can't do. Have fun. I will see you very soon.